Okay, so I see people, as people are starting to join us, I just want to say thank you for joining us uh, for this special Living and Learning Communities webinar. Uh, we've got our professor Steve Ortiz with us, as well as some admitted students who are really excited to talk to you about what it means to be on Binghamton University's campus in living in uh, one of our unique dorming communities, but what kind of living and learning um, community options that we have for those on campus as well. Um, they're very unique uh, situations. I, I myself lived on campus all four years, both in Newing College and um, in our apartment communities, and I'm joined by two of our other uh, counselors here who are going to be helping us on the back end with the Q&As and I know um, Craig and, and Alex you guys can introduce yourselves as well so that we can um, start to, to get started and learn more about these uh, living communities. Hello everybody I'm Craig Broccoli I'm the Associate Director of Admissions for Binghamton but I'm actually I'm based in New York City where I cover this realm. Uh, I did live on campus uh, all four years as an undergrad and even as a grad student I was an RA. I lived in both the Mountain View community and College in the Woods. Um, so right behind me actually is the Nature Preserve on campus, which borders the back end of the, those communities. So residential life and especially these learning communities really add a real intimate aspect to the, the whole Binghamton life. I'll be on the back end though, answering questions and answers on the, on the chat side. Hi everyone, my name is Alexander Ma. I'm a New York City Admissions Counselor for Binghamton University and I work along with Craig down here. Great, so um, we are gonna turn our cameras off. We will be helping on the Q&A on the backside. We're gonna turn it over to Steve and some of our students who have lived in these living and learning communities. Um, and they're going to um, show you a presentation and give you some real experience about what it's like to be a first year student, a second year student on campus in those communities and um, the special programming that they have to offer. So Steve can uh, take it away. Great, thanks everybody. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we're really happy to have you here. Uh, we know that this is not the most ideal setup for uh, introducing uh, some of these aspects of the university to you, but we're glad to be able to do this through video conferencing. I'm joined with a number of students who are in learning communities or have been in them uh, in their first and second year. I'll introduce them in a few minutes. Uh, let me first uh, share my screen here. And there we are. Okay. So um, Today we're going to talk about what living and, li living and learning communities are first and then what they are at Binghamton University and then we'll have students introduce themselves and uh, share their experiences then we'll open it up for an extended question and answer session. Uh, so we'll go with that. So what is a living learning community? Um, at Binghamton University living learning communities are set aside residential living spaces in our various residential communities that have a thematic uh, kind of core to them. So in each residential community, there's a separate uh, wing or a floor and students who choose to live in that area share an academic interest, uh, whether it be engineering uh, or nursing or entre entrepreneurship, or they share other broad interests that will inform their um, academic careers. So we have politics, law and society, we have international relations and cultural exchange. We have a new environmental action and studies. Uh, we also have a robotics. So uh, those, those uh, interests will drive then where you live and who you're living with. Uh, one of the features of uh, the living learning community uh, for us is that it's not just putting people who share interest in the same space, although that is a big part of it. You are living around people who are uh, uh, again, very much interested in the things you're interested in. But beyond that, uh, the living learning community students will take classes together. And there's a different ways to approach this. Each of the learning communities on uh, our campus have the collegiate professors. So I'm the collegiate professor of College in the Woods. So therefore, I uh, direct, orchestrate the living, uh, living learning communities in College in the Woods. But each of the collegiate professors who directs their learning community may do it in a slightly different way. But you all will take at least one class together as a floor or wing. Uh, and in some cases, you'll take multiple classes together. Uh, in, uh, for, for example, the ones that I run, usually about two or three classes out of the five you might take as uh, four or five you might take as a, a freshman in your fall. But for engineering, for example, uh, where there's a set uh, first year curriculum, uh, almost all of your classes will be shared uh, in some way or another. So that's what a living learning community is. Uh, let me talk about why they matter for students. 
Uh, and I have four different bullet points here that are set up separately, but I think when you listen to our students' experiences, you will recognize that they're really far more entangled than that, uh, in that it's hard, it's sometimes really hard to disentangle what's social and what's academic. So the first benefit I would mention is social. So because you are uh, living around people who share your interests, you have lots of things to talk about on day one. Uh, you also often are put together uh, during orientations uh, where you will meet one another uh, and, and, and see not just maybe your roommate who's at your orientation session in the summer, but also you might meet four or five, six, seven people who are going to be living next to you uh, on your floor. So from the, from the summer all the way into the fall, there's a real social component to it. And if you're taking classes together and living together, you also end up doing a lot of other things together because you are walking to class together, you are eating lunch at the same time because your schedules are very similar, and you really build social bonds really quickly. I know that, uh, and, and again, the students will talk much more about this. This is what I observe from uh, being around the learning community students at College in the Woods, is that within a matter of a week or two, they're already pretty tight. And um, much, uh, much of the rest of the campus is jealous of that because like, how do you know everybody? It's like, well, I'm in the learning community. I, I know 20 people like on day three of being on campus. So the social aspects are enormous. There are also enormously important academic uh, components to it. And that is, uh, depending on the learning community, you will be, uh, uh, and again, the, the, the experiences here will differ from one learning community to the next. But the academic component will mean you're taking classes together. So you have people around you who are grappling with the same material. And so you can uh, have you know, study uh, sessions with people on your floor and you can really kind of augment your academic uh, life as a first year uh, freshman transitioning to college with that kind of infrastructure of support because everyone around you is, is uh, going through it but also taking similar classes. Uh, the second way academically uh, important is that you get by virtue of uh, being in a learning community, you get two really important things right away. And the first of these is you get really hands-on mentoring and, and academic advice from a professor who uh, directs the learning community. Uh, and almost all of us who direct them have real hands-on interest uh, or practice in those, in those subject matters ourselves. So we, we are there, uh, and of course we're there for all the students uh, in, in the, our residential communities, but we know our learning, uh, living learning community members well, they come to us for advice. We are able to point out, once we know who they are and what their interests are, we can really point them in directions of things going on around campus. And so you get that kind of academic mentoring, which can be very helpful right away. The second reason for it's academically important uh, is that um, you get, uh, one of the things that all of the learning communities do is they introduce you to the broad array of of resources the campus has in your academic areas of interest. And so for first year students, one of the struggles is, oh, how do I, I'm really interested in this, but how do I get there from, from here? And you will be, uh, as a part of the learning community, those people will come to the learning community and explain how to get there from here and, and what all the things are going on around campus uh, academically in terms of research, in terms of talks, in terms of uh, any type of thing you can think of that you might be uh, benefited from uh, is at, right in front of you from the start. The third plank here is co-curricular or extracurricular. Um, one of the great things about the learning communities uh, is that everyone, a lot of people at least, uh, are interested in similar things. And so if it's a learning community that has multiple years of students in there, uh, second year students will try to tap first year students coming in to join their club or join their organization or get involved in this extracurricular thing that's really important and it's going to be very similar to the types of things that you're interested in. Um, and I think, like I said also, the co-curricular, uh, that faculty will be trying to tap you to do, to help them do research or to help them uh, get involved in projects they may have. Uh, and so right away, you're really, you're really drawn into the co-curricular and extracurricular life of the university. And one of the things we found is that all these things kind of lead to a greater level engagement of our learning community students uh, with the community, uh, whether it be the Binghamton University community or the, or the Binghamton uh, community at large. Uh, and they become involved, a lot of them become involved in very uh, important civic uh, uh, organizations and civic engagement issues uh, right away. So no matter what learning community you might be interested in based on, on your um, interest, all four of these things are what uh, people point to as important uh, things. 
Now, this is from the uh, uh, Association of American Colleges and Universities uh, who've done research on li uh, living learning communities. And I just wanted to highlight them there for you. Uh, so some of the research shows uh, for first year students, uh, they've lived, they applied more critical thinking skills, took advantage of opportunities to apply knowledge in new settings. They expressed more commitment to civic engagement. They acted on their commitment by volunteering or taking service learning courses. Finally, students in learning, uh, living learning uh, places felt they had a, made a smoother transition to college, both academically and socially. And I think you'll hear from this from some of our student uh, volunteers uh, here in a minute. But I want to point out this longer uh, run analysis too, that the research found that even one year in a living learning community that those students uh, had lasting effects. They lived, uh, they had higher levels of academic self-confidence. They were more likely to be a mentor to other students, uh, i.e. a leader, and remained more uh, committed to civic engagement three years later. So those are some of the things that research has shown, not just what we find here at our campus. So uh, to look at the um, learning communities that we have on Binghamton's campus, I just wanted to pinpoint the eight. They are spread around uh, throughout uh, the residential communities. Uh, the apartments do not have one. Uh, Newing has one, although it's not listed here because it is the scholars community, uh, and that is one that you have to be invited to. But all of the other four listed here, the uh, computers, robotics, and engineering at Dickinson, the entrepreneurship at Dickinson, at Mountain View, there's the engineering and nursing. At uh, Hinman, there's the public service uh, learning community. And at College in the Woods, we have uh, the politics, law, and society, the international relations and cultural exchange. And new for this fall, we have an environmental action and studies learning community. Uh, uh, you will see, again, they're spread throughout. Uh, all the, prof the collegiate professors are engaged with doing these. Uh, at Dickinson, uh, Professor Kim Jowsey, at Hinman, uh, Professor Al Voss, and at Mountain View, Professor Dana Stewart. All of them are the people that you will be in touch with if you choose to apply for one of these learning communities. So how do you sign up? So uh, this is uh, a run through residential life. So once you are uh, committed to becoming a Binghamton student and you put down a deposit to be a student, uh, you will then uh, sign up for uh, to be uh, part of the housing process. This is not signing up for a room at this stage. You're just kind of signing up and saying, I'm going to be there in the fall. And in that housing portal where you sign up uh, for, uh, for the fall, uh, there is a, 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 a box there where you can uh, check interest in. It will show you how to apply for each of the various learning communities. Some of them have a direct link to an application. Some you just click interest and the collegiate professor will reach out to you through an email. Uh, but if you click interest in one of these learning communities, please, please, please be attentive to your, uh, your Binghamton email address uh, because that is how we will be contacting you going forward. Now, uh, what I'd like to do is introduce uh, four students here to you uh, who are either first or second, well, actually we have, we have first, second, third year and fourth year students although Kristen and Jacob are both graduating this semester. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves briefly, just uh, who they are, where they're from, what their majors are, and uh, just a couple of their lines of things they are involved in on campus. And then I'll come back to them and ask them about their uh, experiences in the learning community. So uh, Jackson, Loxme, Kristen, and Jacob, do you want to introduce yourselves? Sure. Hey, guys. Uh, my name's Jackson. I'm a freshman. I'm from Clifton Park, New York. I was in the politics, law, and society learning community this year, and I'll be there next year as well. Um, I'm a majoring in philosophy, politics, and law. And uh, for extracurriculars, I was involved with a group called SA Advocates, which is a group that um, represents students that have been uh, charged with violating the code of uh, conduct on campus. And I'm also organizing with the Bernie Sanders campaign. Uh, hi, I'm Lakshmi. Um, I'm a sophomore and I was a, I'm a second year student in the international relations and cultural exchange learning community at College in the Woods. Um, what, what do I need to say? My majors? Okay. Major, I'm a major stuff, yeah. yeah, okay. So I'm a poli -sci political science and Arabic studies major and I'm also a history and human rights minor. And on campus, I'm involved with Pipe Dream, which is our student run newspaper. Um, and next next year, I'm going to be um, an arts and culture editor for that paper. And I'm also a fundraising chair for the fencing team. 
So if you want to get involved in club sports, I can also talk to you. Great. Kristen, do you want to go? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, hi guys, my name is Kristen. Um, I'm currently a junior, but technically graduating this year. Um, I lived in the politics, law and society learning community for both my first two years on campus. Um, and my major is uh, philosophy, politics and law, um, but I'm kind of doing a little bit of difference. So now I'm going um, and adding that with a master's in business administration. So I can kind of talk about ways to combine those two things. Um, I mean, living on campus was a great experience for me. Living college in the woods, you know, I it's my home, I call it that way. Um, one cool thing that I did actually in that community was I was executive vice president and then actually president of college in the woods. So I helped run all those cool traditions that we have, um, like casino in the woods and stuff like that. So if you want to talk more about CIW and things like that, yeah. Great, thank you, Kristen. Jacob. Hi, uh, so I'm Jacob. I'm actually uh, a recent grad. I graduated in December. Uh, I majored in political science and history, and during my time on campus, I was uh, involved with the Roosevelt Institute, uh, as well as the American Parliamentary Debate Association and Generation Vote, uh, and I was in the uh, politics, law, and society learning community. Great. All right, I'm going to come get back to you guys in just a second here. Um, let me see. Let me, where we are. Yeah, let's, let's, we're going to wait for questions. But let me ask you. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask the questions first. Uh, those of you who are, are tuning in, and I'm going to ask our first and second year students who are still. Uh, uh, I know they're not right now, but they were technically uh, still living on campus uh, in our communities. Um, what do you guys think were the primary benefits for you as a first year student joining a learning community? And again, we're going to try to keep this. Uh, not uh, associated with your specific residential community, but just in general, like more generic ways. Like it was like, what 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 mattered to you as a first year student? And then Kristen and and Jacob, I'll get to you guys in a few minutes. Uh, Jackson, you want to go? You were the most recent first year student. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I think the biggest thing uh, right away was that housing and uh, classes for my first semester were essentially taken care of. I took three classes for twelve credits my first semester. Uh, all of which were signed up uh, for me by CV Steve, Professor Ortiz. And that was really a big benefit because uh, a lot of the um, craziness of becoming a first semester freshman involves stuff like housing, stuff like signing up for classes. So being able to have that taken care of was a huge weight off my shoulders. So just on the logistical side, that was amazing uh, to have that through the community, but also on a social side too. I mean, the people I met uh, first day in my dorm on my floor uh, are still my closest friends today um, from college. I talk to them every day, even though we're not at school anymore, we still text. When we were at school, we'd hang out every single day and we would have classes together, we'd eat lunch together. So it's absolutely invaluable to have those people um, kind of built into your experience at college so you don't have to have that. You know, some people have tough times when they first get there finding friends, but um, in learning communities, it's uh, almost automatic because you have people that are living with you, taking classes with, classes with you and, and all that. So it's great. Great. Loxman, you want to uh, add to the first year experience and maybe as you move into a second year? Yeah. So one of the first benefits I got right away from the learning community was the friends that I made right away, as Jackson said. Um, and something that I thought was really nice was that we all were bounded together with that shared interest in what our learning community was about, but we also all had very widely different interests, interests like going beyond that. So not only, like we all shared that one bond, but we also all went in different paths. We all made friends outside of the community. So it's not like these are the people that are gonna be your only friends throughout all of college. You're gonna meet way more people like with the help of these people because it helps, it just helps you become very confident and way more comfortable in college and helps you just make the best out of your community and encourages you to join other clubs on campus and just do anything. It makes you way more comfortable with the whole campus experience. Yeah. Did you have, let me just uh, ask a follow-up. Did you have someone introduce you to the pipe dream or did you just go to the pipe dream by yourself? Uh, I, I went to that by myself because that was something I knew that I wanted to join since I uh, came into the since I came to college, but okay. still it was one of the best decisions I made. Okay, um, Kristen and Jacob, let me move to you guys and ask you a second. Thank you, Lotsman. Uh, let me ask you guys a second uh, kind of component to this. So you're looking back now from either having just graduated or about to graduate, and um, tell me what you joined. Why did you join? 
And then actually, what did you find to be the most valuable thing uh, now in retrospect? And Kristen, if you want to go first, I guess you're... Okay, yeah. Um, so the reason why I joined when I was coming as a freshman is a lot of the reason I feel like Jackson outlined um, is I was a little worried about friends. I was a little worried about classes and like just kind of figuring all out. So originally, I feel like I did join for um, the friends, but also the mentorship component. Um, I talk to CP Steve all the time now, even after leaving. Um, and I think that relationship was it's and still is very invaluable for me um i'd say like the second part of that question i'm like looking back what i feel like you know it really did for me one is definitely friends um it's funny actually locked me can bow which i still find myself very often in the learning community um now because two of my absolute best friends um live in it currently um so very often i'm in actually Lakshmi's room Lakshmi suite um <laughs> hanging out with those people um so i would definitely say friendship is a very strong one um which has helped develop other interests um i still it, they just are adding the ciw like an environmental impact one um which is something i'm very passionate about so i'd say overall um, it really is a combination of those four things that uh, CP Steve outlined for all learning communities. It's like you have the social aspect, but then it very much helps you academically. But then you get involved in extracurriculars. Like I could be president of my dorming community, I think in part because of the experience I did have in the learning community. Um, and I think just that overall experience is really what was so valuable to me. Great. Thank you, Chris. What about you, Jacob? Um, yeah, so I originally joined uh, to get that sense of community and just because I enjoyed politics, I thought that it was going to be uh, something that was going to be very beneficial. And looking back, I could just kind of see how the community just stayed with me throughout the entirety of my college career, even going into when I've graduated. Uh, I look back at the house that I was living in off campus, and I think half the people that were living with me were original members of the Politics Law and Society Learning Community, even four years afterwards. Um, I look back at the organizations I was a part of, like uh, Generation Vote, which was really something that was a product of the learning community itself, where many of the people that were on that original leadership team were learning community members. Um, the American Parliamentary Deb Debate Association, where... Uh, the, the the president before me and then when I became president of that organization were both members of the politics law and society community and all of those things and all of those experiences kind of catapulted me into this post-grad situation where now I am working on a political campaign in uh, upstate New York because of all of those experiences that I had before and everything that I was able to gain as a student in the community. Okay, Jacob, thank you. All right, so we have an opportunity now. I think that's the, the last of my, um, of my uh, presentation here. And we just want to hear uh, from questions from you. And Carrie, did you want to come in and, and, and moderate this? Or do you want me to moderate this? Or how would you like to do this? Um, Steve, we've, we've put some questions for you to answer okay. live. You want to take a look at those. Uh, maybe you sure. could to those first. Yes. Okay. So uh, let me go to the question about uh, the an entrepreneurship learning community. Uh, that those are very specific questions. Uh, if you join, you'll see if live in Johnson. If, if I believe it is in Johnson, but, but I'm not the collegiate professor of that community. Uh, if you the the learning community experience is that if you don't live in the community, you're not really gaining the benefits of 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 the learning community, right? I mean, it, it, these are uh, run through residential life and they are living spaces. So uh, you have to live uh, where they uh, are lo located. Um, but uh, we've had we've had ex examples of really extenuating circumstances where someone um, came in, but they were uh, they really wanted to do it. They lived in a different spot, and it just doesn't work out the same. The benefits are are, are just simply reduced uh, in that way. So I don't know uh, exactly if there are single rooms. But uh, that's the response to the environmental one. Um, and let's then move to Annabelle's. Um, uh, let's go to the gender breakdown in the li living communities first. Because um, I think each of us has had, uh, in, in the ones in College in the Woods, different kinds of, of gender breakdowns. Uh, but the, the learning communities, I mean, you use the word competitive. Um, and you know, basically what the learning community system is, these are all admitted students right? We're not, we're not looking for, uh, you know, and I can speak for my, the ones that I run. I'm not looking for the top 10% of the learning community of the, of the admitted students coming in to be in the learning. I'm looking for people who have this interest and are committed to doing that, that, 
uh, that experience. And so uh, competitive, I mean, you have to do the application and you have to be uh, someone who truly is interested in it, but they're not competitive in the way that getting into Binghamton University is competitive, let's put it that way, nor is it something like uh, the scholars program or the FRI program that has uh, a kind of competitive uh, uh, aspect to it. Um, so, uh, and then uh, what about the gender breakdown? So uh, does someone want to answer the gender breakdown? Jackson, do you want to answer the gender breakdown first? Because you're in the first year right now. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think it was pretty even um, for the most part. We had, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, I think we had almost perfectly even um, boy and girl split. And it wasn't really, um, so the way that the, the floor I lived on was, is we had a, a one wall was all male dorms. The next wall is female dorms. And then we had, actually, now that I think of it, we probably had more females than males, but not by, not, not by a lot. It was pretty even. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so pretty cool. even. Uh, Laxmi, what about your class? Do you recall? Um, if I remember correctly, I think we had more girls than boys. Yeah. Um, the international relations yeah. community did, yeah. The international, yeah. But we were also, like, kind of mixed in with the uh, philosophy ones, so, the politics ones. So, um, yeah. but altogether, I think we did have more girls. Right. Yeah, um, I think, you know, some of them are going to have a, uh, a, a gender imbalance, but I think most of them are, are, are try to achieve gender balance. I don't, um, uh, but I don't have all those details off the top of my head. So uh, the, um, are the living, uh, learning communities, um, uh, so let's see, I'll, I'll go to the one right on top here. So are, are the LLCs only for first year students or all students throughout the years? This will vary for, for the different uh, communities. So um, some, uh, like robotics, I think, uh, is there for you know, people for three and four years. Uh, the way that I have uh, operated the um, learning communities in College in the Woods, and I believe this is the way that the Hinman Public Service one is, operates also, it is for two, uh, two years. Uh, and that, you, you're there for year one, you return to the, the community for year two, and then you, um, and then you kind of move on to like off campus, like Jacob was saying, or you move, or you move somewhere else uh, typically off campus though. Uh, and you're also moving more deeply into your academic uh, curricular path and the learning communities can't really offer you classes the same way they can when you're all first and second year students. So, uh, mo but, and then some like the new environmental action and studies uh, learning community is going to be first year students only, right? So this, it kind of varies uh, student by student. Um, now, uh, let's see here. So can any student who wants to be in a learning community be part of one? Is there a limit to the amount of students that can live there? Um, yes, uh, anyone who wants to be a part of one, if you do the application and you show interest and you really want to be a part of it, uh, you know, there's, there, there's likely to be space for you, but there are limits because these are floors uh, and these are, these are contained spaces. So I typically have 36 uh, open beds to house the politics, law and society and uh, international relations learning community. And so I can take maybe eight, I try to take 18 and 18, but maybe one year I'll have 22 and, and the next year I'll, and the other learning community I'll have 14, but I only have a certain amount of space uh, that is set aside for us. So if you want to do this, you really do need to apply as quickly or, you know, click interest and be, uh, apply to it and commit to it as soon as you can, because while they are uh, there's anyone who kind of wants to do it is free to do it. Uh, they the space may run out. Uh, so um, let me uh, move to one more. Let me ask the students a question here because we have them here. We have their their um, their expertise, and, and I want to hear more from them. So let me ask each of you guys a, uh, the same question: What's the one learning community uh, well, learning community experience that you really think of? Uh, as like the quintessential learning community experience for you. And, and, and fire at will, those of you who are out there. And I'll get back to your questions in just a second, those of you who are, uh, who are waiting here. No fire at will here? Um, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Lastly, go ahead. I think probably the second year colloquial class we took with CP Steve, okay. where all the second year um, learning community students for international relations and um, politics, law and society. We all took one class with CP Steve himself 
And it was more of a career building tool where we just discussed possible career paths with all our different majors and discussed what we could do with our education and just all the different paths that we could take. And I think it was something that was very helpful and not something that you can get very, well, it is something you can get very easily at college if you go to the Fleischmann Center and stuff, but having like a dedicated class once a week to talk about that with a professor was very helpful. And I think one of the main benefits of the learning community. Okay, great, so the second year colloquium. Yeah, in which we do talk about career paths. And, and that's something, again, from the start in the learning communities, because the professor and the students have shared interest, uh, the professor can also often really point people in those directions and we'll have alumni they can connect you to and all that kind of stuff to build your network out from the start, which is really helpful, I think. Uh, who wants to jump in on that question before I get to the others here? I can, uh, I can jump in. Okay, um, so I think one thing that was uh, pretty big for me really is like the mentorship and like the opportunities that come with it. Um, I also do think that class, that second year class where you combine both interests. So in CIW's case, it was politics, society and um, international, like the international one. I think that is very cool because, you know, again, you're talking to people that aren't necessarily your exact major, but kind of seeing ways where like those two, you know, um, different ideas can come together um, but then with that it's like the opportunities that provided I know people came in um, to talk about like accelerated degrees and stuff which is part of the reason why I am in the degree I am right now and being in graduate school now and next year um, so I would say overall like the opportunities it provides are um, very transformative uh, another really cool thing that I did more personal experience is one thing that um, came out because the college professor will very often like send emails about new opportunities so one thing was this SUNY global experience down in New York City um, and for a week I went down to New York City um, I applied CB Silver wrote me a letter of recommendation um, and I went there for a week and we talked about like culture and emotional intelligence we created a project and I got to live in um, FIT's buildings for the week and that was all completely paid for um, so I would say that there's just really a lot of opportunity that comes out of a more specific experience like this. And you get so and to be to follow up on that the reason why Kristen did that if there had been a mass email you may not have seen it right if it had been to something but because it came from uh, the collegiate professor or some of your learning community you're like oh hey this might be something I'm actually in, interested in, right? Is that, is, that, uh, is that right? Yeah, I mean, you will definitely find that you will get a lot of emails from a lot of different things. So like kind of having a streamline, like every email that, you know, I think you've ever sent, I've personally opened and I look at it and I, you know, even this was an email and I, I pledged interest and wanted to do something like this. I um, mean, even now that I'm not in the learning community anymore. So I definitely think like having that source, but I think it's also like a smaller application pool, like other people like mon not, might not have been available or not have seen it. So um, you know that, I think that also plays a factor. Good, thank you, Jackson or, or Jacob. Do you want to uh, respond to this? Jacob does, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, um, so um, I think that kind of the quintessential experience is just having uh, kind of uniquely shared experiences with those who are, have similar interests with, with you. So like, for example, um, when I joined in the fall of 2016, we were taking uh, a course for the colloquium with Professor Ortiz uh, on American presidential elections during the presidential election of 2016. And we're doing it again this year, by the way. We're doing it again this year. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, um, so kind of not only getting that historical context, which pushed me towards being a history major uh, long term, but also just have, being able to have that discussion class and then that discussion out of class where you're sh sort of living around a group of people who are interested in politics during one of the most consequential elections of our lifetime is something that is a shared experience that I'll remember for the rest of my life because it's such a unique way to sort of engage with the topic at hand and what's going on with the world around you that I was not able to uh, even come close to experiencing before coming to college. Great. Thank you, Jacob. Jackson, what do you think? I think you guys all hit the nail on the head. Um, the classes were great. Uh, I had a class with CB Steve uh, this past semester. Got cut short, unfortunately, but we always had a great time. Uh, we'd usually get dinner after, people on the floor. Um, but outside of the classroom, I think one of the quintessential experiences for me was just all like the study sessions in the dorms with each other because we all had similar classes. Just like, it, you know, you really feel like you're in a community like this when you can walk, you know, 500 feet from your door and then you're at somebody else's door and you can stay there all night staying up for some final you have that everyone has that shared experience of you know studying for and struggling with so it's it's really great 
I think to have that uh, as well as the in-class stuff with um, the CP. Okay. Thank you guys. All right, let's get back to the questions here. So uh, there's one, are there classes you need to take for the community service learning community? So Al Voss is the collegiate professor of Hinman and runs the public service uh, learning community. And uh, Professor Voss, Al, as he's like to, is known around Hinman, uh, is, um, has a class that he teaches, yes. And then he, uh, he picks a, like a whole array of classes that will be um, eligible. If you sign up for one of those classes, that kind of counts towards your public service. They could be intro sociology, it could be human development. There's a, a lot of classes that he, he picks for people and then they sign themselves in. I actually do it a little bit differently uh, in that when I work with the academic departments to uh, have seats held for my learning community students, and then uh, they, I will register them for those classes. So Jackson said that he came in and he had 12 credits already registered for. Um, many of the students experience in the learning community is that they've got, you know, eight, 12, 16 credits already, and they're not really doing that at orientation. Um, but even if they only have eight, they only have to find two classes in orientation. It just makes things very smooth and easy. Uh, so, so are there classes you need to take? Each learning community will have a different curricular path, right? So the engineering one, it's basically because they're all engineers and all engineers more or less have the same first year curriculum, you, you are doing that. Whereas the ones that have different kinds of thematic in, uh, emphasis uh, that are in Harper, uh, have different ways of approaching it. Some you can pick from this group, others like me, here's some classes, which ones do you want? And then we'll put you all together. Uh, and that seems to work uh, best for the, the, those. Uh, I can't speak to uh, robotics and, and, and the uh, entrepreneurship, but again, uh, if you're interested in those other fields, please reach out to the, to the collegiate professor and ask those questions. Uh, let's skip over, uh, we're gonna talk, uh, 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 college in the woods in just a minute uh, but let's talk first about how does it affect your schedule because it really is a segue right out of that so it depends on on what your skit what depends on which learning community and which approach to the curriculum uh, it has so again if you were going you want to be in the engineering uh, learning community um, it's not going to affect your schedule at all because that first year curriculum is basically the engineering curriculum if you're going to be in say uh, the new environmental studies uh, one uh, you would be taking an environmental studies, uh, intro to environmental studies class, plus a cornerstone uh, uh, class uh, for the learning community. So you would have about six hours that were set aside. You would still have a lot of space in your schedule to build out other academic uh, interests, to take other academic uh, focal, uh, focused classes, uh, and to, um, to kind of have your own space. So. Uh, it really depends which community you're in on whether or not, um, whether or not, um, you know, how, how your course schedule would, would, would uh, work out. So uh, let, me, uh, let me ask this question so our, our, our students can chime in. Will I have enough time to focus on my academics if I join an LLC alongside joining clubs, doing an internship, and playing sports? So uh, I think since all of you have done many of these things, uh, uh, let's each go through a little more depth here on the things that you do on campus, uh, because each of you have uh, really rich uh, academic and social calendars. Who wants to go first on that one? Anyone want to jump in? Kristen does, go for it. That's fine. Um, okay, yeah. So, I mean, I definitely think that is a very personal question because it's definitely how you organize all those things. Um, but blanket statement-wise, I would definitely say yes. I think the learning community is very much something of, like, what you make of it. Um, so, if it's like there's something that you can't do because it's a little bit more of, like, a hard week, like, that's very much worked with you on that. Like, you know, you can, like, work through that. You're not going to be penalized for any of that. I also think a lot of the learning community is a social aspect. So, like, you know, I might do some of those other extracurricular activities with my friends. I mean, I know other things that I did when it is I'm a tour guide when I was in the learning community. I was a student ambassador. I, uh, I said I was president of Pallet in the Woods, actually. Um, I did join other clubs for fun. Um, I joined the Student Association Programming Board. So I got like to like, talk about like concerts and stuff. So like something completely unrelated um, to the learning community. Um, but I think there are so many different opportunities at a school like Binghamton. Um, even as a tour guide, I say it's my favorite thing is the opportunity, not even just from a learning community, um, but from the school itself. Um, where you can definitely budget in other things. It's not like if you opt to be in the learning community, that's all you're signing up for for the next um, right. two years of your life. Right, good. Thank you. Who wants to go next on that one? Again, all of you are busy people, so you, these, are, these are good ones, good people to ask. 
Go ahead, Jackson. Yeah, um, I would say that uh, one thing that really helped me uh, with focusing, because in high school, I was not big on focusing on academics. I, it took me a, a long time to do homework and study and stuff. But I found that in the community, one of the things that's so great about it is that you kind of have people around you that not only are your friends, but are also kind of keeping you on track in these classes you share. So if there are days when you're like, oh, I don't want to study, I don't want to do homework, you're going to get a text from one of your friends saying, hey, do you guys want to do a study group or something? You're like, all right, well, I guess I have to do that now, which really helped for me personally just to get me, you know, continuously keep the ball rolling and keep focused on academics. So in a way, I think being in the learning community actually made me more focused on academics and gave me more time to do other things because the academics and the social aspect are all built into one. Yeah, that's a great example of how the academic can be social, right? Many people learn better socially like that. Uh, you know, it's like being in a, uh, having a workout buddy, right? When you're working out, like you need someone to get you to the gym, right? And, and so that's kind of how it worked for Jackson. Uh, Jacob or, or Lakshmi, do you want to approach either of these two things? Lakshmi, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I agree with what Jackson said a lot. Even sophomore year, when you don't necessarily have like all the same classes as people in the learning community, you still find time to meet up with your friends and maybe just go to Bartle and go to the library and just do work even if it's not all the same subject. So they all really keep you on track to do work. And for extracurriculars, I do two extracurriculars that take a lot of time in particular. Like for fencing practice, I do practice two hours a week, uh, four day, four, two hours a day, four days a week. And for Pipe Dream, I stay in the office from like 5 p.m. to midnight, at least twice a week. But it, the learning community does not take up so much of your time that you don't have time to do anything else. You still have a lot of time to explore campus, explore everything you want. And when you go back to your learning community, when you go back to your dorms, you just find a bunch of friends there who you can relax with and also do work with at the end of the day. Yeah. By the way, uh, you, you can see why Lakshmi will be at Pipe Dream as long as she is. You look at the Pipe Dream online, you'll see her byline almost everywhere. So that's she's a busy, a busy writer. Uh, uh, Jacob, do you want to approach this too? Just in the one last shot at this, then I'll answer some of these other questions. Yeah, I, I think everybody else really covered everything. Um, I think that just like kind of to sum everything up, the learning community is something that is uh, an additive to your college experience without necessarily taking up, so, taking away from anything else. It's like a one, like it's a one-way trade-off, right? Where you're in this area of like-minded people, with similar goals and similar focuses. Um, it's difficult to be in a find yourself in a scenario where the learning community is kind of pulling you away from other things. Rather, it's pushing you to kind of do those extra extracurriculars, but also work with your friends and work with your fellow community members and professors to make sure that you're able to do that in a responsible way that keeps you healthy and also keeps you on track for success in university. Um, I think that kind of coming from the perspective of maybe somebody who's asking this question, if you're concerned about the learning community kind of putting you over uh, overboard as far as not being able to get things done or lead a healthy lifestyle, I think it actually helps you get things done and helps you lead a healthier lifestyle in college. Great. Thank you, Jacob. All right. So let's uh, address this. Um, thank all of you, actually. Uh, so uh, once you apply to the LLC, how long does it take to find out if you're accepted? Uh, this will vary uh, from community to community. Uh, basically, um, so uh, the process is that you will apply. Uh, and uh, once you apply, uh, like for me, uh, you know, if, if someone's a perfect fit for one of my learning communities, uh, I, I accept them. You know, I'm like, hey, you know, come on in. We, we want you. I want, I want you to be in the community and, and take that spot. Uh, I, so I, I think of it more for, for my learning communities as rolling admissions. As they come in, if they're perfect, uh, you know, people for this, I, I, I send an email out right away. I'd love to have you as part of the learning community. You know, let me know so that we can hold that spot for you. Uh, others have a, uh, different uh, approaches to it um, in terms of the application process. Uh, I think that we're, as professors, uh, and, and we were always online anyways, but boy, are we online now. So, I mean, we are going to be responsive to uh, people, uh, both answering their questions and, and also getting to their applications. Again, we want, we want to have this uh, sorted out. Ideally, uh, you know, some of us want to have it sorted out by the end of May. Uh, so we're responding and trying to get people uh, registered for classes. I think Al Voss in the public service one has a, a little bit of a, more of a delayed timeline. 
Uh, but I, I, I'm not, uh, I don't want to, I don't be uh, held to that. Uh, but anyway, so you'll hear pretty quickly. You know, if you, if you are responding to your Binghamton email address, uh, you will hear pretty quickly, I think, is the, is the best uh, answer to that. And then, um, so let me, uh, so, okay, let me, there was a question about the environmental stu uh, studies one. Did that go away? I think it did. Okay, let me. Uh, so for, uh, do you have to do it for two years? Can you only do it for one? Uh, these, uh, all these fine folks uh, did it for two, uh, are doing it for two in Jackson's case. Uh, but we've had people who've come in uh, for one year and they liked it or they didn't like it and they, they decided not to come back. Uh, they wanted to live off campus is usually one of the primary reasons that people don't come back. Uh, but some, some, for some people, this, they just don't, it just doesn't work out for them for whatever reason. Uh, but you do not have to do it. You're not committing to a two-year engagement, right? Uh, you're just a kind of agreeing to do it this first year. So that's that. Um, can you apply to the learning communities after May 1st? Absolutely. Uh, you can absolutely apply after May 1st. Although, like I said, when we do this on a rolling kind of space available basis, so the sooner, the sooner you find out it's something you want to do, this, the better it would be to apply. Uh, let me ask our student ambassadors here. Okay, so what are the, this is, a, this is a, actually a really interesting question. So what are the vibes of the different dorms? And if you are in an LLC, do you feel like you're part of the dorm or more separate? Now, uh, at Binghamton, just to be clear, uh, each residential community has multiple buildings, right? So um, uh, the, and the living learning communities are in a building of a larger residential community. But does anyone want to uh, tackle that one about, about the uh, dorms and about feeling part of it or more separate or? I can, or Jackson. Kristen, can go ahead. Yeah, Kristen and Jackson. Go that? ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, so definitely I would say the vibe is definitely, I would just say overall positive one. I think this is more towards the social aspect of it. I mean, as I already hinted at the beginning, like I, even like one of my, the one of the people that I met in the learning community last year when I did it, like we're going to live together off campus next year. I would, that's why I was in the learning community so much this year. Um, and it really does, I think, help make you feel more a part of it because uh, again kind of the other question the other things that the learning community can help you do is i do all those other things or a lot of them with the friends that i've made there so whether it's eating whether it's a club um whether it's just it's doing homework downstairs in the study lounge whether it's studying for a test whatever it is it's a very community type environment and i think that like the vibe of that would only be positive um, it made my transition as a freshman, you know, like I thought I, I was a very independent person. I wasn't really worried about going to college. And then when you're there, you're like, okay, wait, I don't really know anyone right now. So I think it definitely helped me feel way more a part of that community um, than it definitely did not make me feel more separate at all. Okay. Thank you, Kristen. Jackson, you want to address that real fast? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm a college in the woods partisan, but I think that um, you really do feel like you are a part of the entire community and not just your learning community. I think that actually a part of the learning community that gets enhanced, at least in my case in College in the Woods, is that a lot of the things we were doing were the, um, the dorm-wide events together. So we were able to kind of have our little group in the learning community and also go like dorm more, or what's it called, uh, uh, Steve? Uh, Woods Olympics. Woods Olympics, yes. Um, that was one of the things that we had, like our little sect of learning community went to, but we all kind of had that um, togetherness that you get with uh, living in a dorm, so. Okay. Um, let me, uh, there was an environmental studies uh, question up there I wanted to make sure I got to. Um, let's see, so I've answered these, right? Are they only for uh, first year students? No. Uh, although they are primarily for first year students, right? Uh, the, the, the biggest impact is when you're coming in as a first year student, you have the best curricular uh, ability to have a kind of common curricular pa uh, plan, but also you are all in that transition at the same time to first year uh, at Binghamton University. So they are mostly for first year students. The Learning Communities of College in the Woods, uh, PLS and IRCE have a second year component that both Lakshmi and Kristen uh, have found to be um, to be helpful, uh, but others uh, can be multiple years. But again, one of the best uh, the best results, the best benefits come from that first year transition. Uh, in some ways, I think. Uh, so uh, I answered the learning. Let me just go back to the environmental studies. The, the environmental oh. one is in the um, in in the chat. You can take a look there. Ah, thank you, thank you. All right, let me uh, manipulate some things here. So okay. Uh, so, uh, the environmental action and studies community will be a, a combination uh, of corridor and a couple suites, uh, and it is only for first-year students, uh, uh, unlike the other two uh, in College in the Woods, because 
uh, the curricular path for the environmental studies and action people might vary so much it's too hard to kind of uh, offer things that can work. Uh, you, uh, you, we might be in a position to offer uh, them, the students as a second year, the colloquium experience that Lakshmi and Kristen have talked about. Uh, it will depend on, on numbers, uh, but uh, you, it is primarily a first year student thing. There will be both suites and corridor rooms on that floor that are open, uh, and uh, we'll see uh, how they are allocated. Uh, because uh, that's an unknown at this point. But the whole floor will be, except the RA, who's an environmental studies major, uh, the whole floor will be first year students who are interested in environmental action and studies. Thank you, uh, Carrie. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we answered all those questions. Uh, does the application for core entail essays? I don't think any of these require formal essays. Uh, you might have a blurb, you know, like a paragraph. Hey, tell me about your interest and experience in, in robotics, right? But in terms of like an essay, no. Um, so no, uh, you will not have essays, uh, I don't think. Some will, some will involve, again, like a paragraph. Uh, I know the entrepreneurship one, Kim Jossi likes to do a, a phone interview too, I, I'm not from my understanding, uh, but uh, that's um, how we go with that. Are there an even number of men and women in the engineering LLC? That is a great question. Uh, can I, and I'm going to ask Carrie if she would to maybe put up uh, collegiate professor Dana Stewart's email, uh, who is the collegiate professor at Mountain View, who might be able to uh, a, a address that issue for you. Um, I think that overall there is a, uh, it is uh, male, not dominated necessarily, but there, there are more men than women in the, in the engineering, in the School of Watson class. Uh, but I don't think, uh, so I don't think the, um, I don't think the LLC is out of, out of whack with the overall gender composition of the School of Watson, if that makes any sense. Um, so roommates, all right. Now, uh, roommates are a, a big question for this. Um, how do I apply, if, uh, how can I find a roommate? So one of the things that I do, and I, and I think fairly successfully, although uh, there are always uh, things, is I match people uh, based on my application and others will do the same thing. They will put two people together. But on my application, uh, I say, hey, um, if you have a roommate in mind who's someone else who's applied to the learning community or is in the learning community, we're happy to put two people together who are in the learning community uh, and so I think all of my colleagues uh, adopt that approach too. But I have found that I have about as good a success rate of matching people as the kind of um, looking through the class of 2024 Facebook page does, for example. Um, and that we, I have a lot of information. Uh, I try to put people together who I think share uh, a lot of attributes that would make for a good roommate pair. Um, so you don't have to find someone. Uh, again, that's, uh, I, I, I match people, uh, and again, usually successfully, not always successfully, uh, but um, you, if you found someone, so did any of you, now Jacob, you probably wouldn't have, because that was the first year of PLS. Kristen, Loxme, or Jackson, did you, no, Jackson, I, I placed you to, uh, with Justin, right? Did any of you find a roommate through Facebook? Yeah, I you, did. You, I, Kristen did? Okay, okay. Yeah. So it can happen, it can happen either way. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, but um, what you're going to find is that because when you do the application, you'll see, and Jacob, this is probably news to you because my first year I wasn't as good at this as I am now, I think, is I have a real long list of questions about matching people, about their, about their living styles, about their habits, about things they're interested in. And, um, you know, I don't ask any questions about religion or politics or race or ethnicity or any of those things. I don't know any of that stuff. But what I know is that these are two people who are uh, night people who are pretty uh, clean freaks and they, they, they seem to have a, a pretty good chance of doing well together, right? Uh, and I try to avoid putting people together that look to have an immediate conflict based on their, on their profile. So uh, I'm pretty uh, successful to that, uh, for that. Um, can I apply to multiple LLCs? You can. Uh, but uh, uh, there are, you can apply to a couple, but I would urge that you, uh, because these, if you get accepted to them, you are holding a seat for someone, uh, you're holding a seat 
that I would urge you to make a decision on which you'd prefer to be in pretty quickly so that seat can go to someone else who might be interested in it, but you can certainly apply to multiples. Um, anything uh, that you would like to finish up with, uh, Kristen, Lakshmi, Jacob, or Jackson about the learning and community experience for you or uh, something you would uh, urge, uh, you know, suggest to an uh, incoming uh, student to Binghamton University that we haven't touched upon, or even if we have touched upon it, you would like to reiterate. Chris, I'll say one thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's very Kristen, important also just to stay open, oh, um, no matter- Kristen froze. <laughs> Am I good? Um, Kristen froze. So anyone else locks me? Okay. Um, I would say let the learning community be- free? There we go. Okay, there we are. All right. <laughs> go ahead, Lakshmi. Um, let the learning community be a good stepping stone for college and let it make you as, feel as comfortable in college as possible and let it be an opportunity for you to explore as many parts of campus as possible because you will have people in your community to ask questions to and you can just explore and discover as many things as you want through the learning community. Good. And, and from a position of confidence, right? You had mentioned that earlier, Lakshmi, that, that I think yeah. that you, you, you like, you feel confident about, you have a base that's your, that, that gives you a level of confidence to then take the next step out, right? To the yeah. next level. Yeah. yeah. Like no one in the community brought me to Pipe Dream, but if it wasn't for the community, I don't think I would have had the confidence to go to Pipe Dream by myself and join. Right. Right. Kristen, you had your hand up earlier. I was losing the feed, I think. Yes, I think I'm good now. Okay. Um, but yeah, so what I would say I think is most important or what I like the advice that I would give is definitely stay open um, where even if I know like I saw some questions pop up about like undecided majors and stuff like that. If you have an interest in politics on society or in any of the, you know, engineering entrepreneurship and that might not be your major or, you, you know, you think it is now, but a year in you're like, wait, that's not what I want to do. Right now I'm doing completely something completely different that I thought I was going to be right. doing when I came in freshman year. Um, I very much thought that I was going to go into law and now I'm going into like, like, um, environmental business kind of um, so I would but I wouldn't say that that experience whatsoever took away from my learning community experience at all I still find politics on society very interesting so I still got to experience that side um, but I would say just you know keep an open mind and even if you change your mind that's not a bad thing I think you can make the learning community experience in any community um, work with a change like that yeah let me add to that this is certainly for college in the woods and then Jacob I saw your hand pop let me go to Jacob but uh, so the environmental action and studies, you don't have to be an environmental studies major to join that. You don't have to be any major to join that. You can, you can major in anything, but if it's something you're passionate about, you'll be living around people who are passionate about it too. Second, so like politics, law, and society, the way that Kristen just mentioned, that you don't have to end up being a political science or PPL major or going to law school or any of those things. Uh, and likewise, international relations and, and cultural exchange. Um, you know, these are, we, we bring people into those experiences uh, but their academic path might uh, go an entirely different way, and, then, and it might intersect in really interesting ways, but it need not, you don't feel like you have, that's why uh, for my learning communities, I put there very boldly, every, every major is welcome, right? Every major is welcome uh, so to make sure that we get those cross flows of, of the people interested in politics, but they're not all political science majors, right? or God forbid, history majors, right? I mean, they're not all in the same kind of world. Uh, so they, they come at it and bring different perspectives and that enriches the community rather than detracts from the community. Jacob, do you wanna add something real quickly to that? No, I think you really covered it all. Um, just whole full endorsement of learning communities in general, especially politics law and society learning community. I think it's an excellent experience. Um, I really have nothing else to add. I think you all really covered it well. Okay. Great. Well, uh, Carrie, looks like we're getting close to our time. Uh, Jackson, Lakshmi, Kristen, Jacob, thank you all. It's very nice to see your faces. I haven't seen them in a little while. Uh, and uh, good luck to you uh, as we move into the, into the rest of this year. Um, Carrie, is there anything else I, I, sh I can add uh, to wrap this up? Or do you want to wrap this up? Uh, would you mind putting my email there for anyone who's interested in uh, either the learning communities and or the College in the Woods learning communities. I'm always happy to respond to specific questions about that. And these wonderful people who have uh, joined us on a Sunday afternoon from uh, the College in the Woods learning experience uh, really makes me feel good about what we're doing and that people who are graduating and moving out into the world still are, like people like Jacob and Kristen, are still committed to the, this idea and the community that they shared there. And that, that's, 
that's one of the best things you can hope for in a learning community at Binghamton University. And, and I hope those of you who are still uh, considering it will, gi will give it a shot. So carry there, that's my last parting word. Yeah, I just wanna thank you guys all so much. I know there's, there's no way that us as counselors that we can really be able to explain it the way that these current students can explain it. They've lived through it, they're currently living through it. So having that perspective and then, you know, Steve, as you, you help direct these, um, we really appreciate you guys coming on, helping to answer all these questions. I think the students have gotten a really great indication of what, what the living and learning communities mean, what it's all about. And it's hard to understand that from just, you know, reading information on a page. Right. So I really thank want to you. just thank you all for being part of this today. Um, I hope everyone's gotten a great um, information from it. And uh, I think it, it went really well. So I just want to thank each and every one of you for spending your time. I know it's a Sunday, but um, I think it was really great for our incoming students to hear and, and prospective students. And I think it's part of what makes Binghamton so great. So I just want to Thank everybody again. Thanks, Carrie. All, all of you CIW people, nice to see you all. Take care. Bye. And Thank hope you. to Bye. see hope to see you as an, those of you in attendance. I hope to see your names on my application list. That's right. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Congrats, everyone.